Welcome to Blue Jay Chat. I'm your host, Nathan Meyer. Alongside me, as always, John Sample. And John, hey, it's just you and me today. It is. It's a little lonely up here, but uh, we'll make it work. Uh, we, I couldn't find a special guest this time, but I'll promise to bring in one next week. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff happened in the three weeks it's been since we had our last Blue Jay Chat. So uh, maybe it's better that it's just you and me, right? I think you know, so. There has been a lot of things yeah. happening. Uh, it's a busy time of the year, always as we approach uh, the holidays. And it's just that time of the year too where you know, we're, we're gearing up for April, we're looking at uh, three new board members potentially in April, and so a lot of things are going. We're well into the school year, and now's when we start really looking at the data for this year and, and seeing how are we doing, are we meeting our expectations, and then it's a big push for, believe it or not, for the end of the school year now. Well, and we got all the fall sports done. We're getting into all of our winter sports too which Thanksgiving breaks next week. I can't believe that one. A two day week next week. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Christmas breaks not that long away well, either, like a month away. Winter break is coming yeah. and uh, before you know it, it'll be here and then we'll be in 2018. Yeah. Hard to believe. Where did 2017 go? It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, gone. <laughs> it's, it's gone. So let's start, actually, let's start with uh, 2017, how it's been so far. So we had, especially with our fall sports since I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. our, our volleyball team went to state. I mean, did you go down to that or? I was not able to make it down there. Uh, the times just didn't match up, so I had a conflict, but uh, I, I was li wishing the girls well, and I, they played well. I mean, just to make it to state, and I was able to be here for uh, when they played St. Croix Central, and that was some very exciting matches. It had me on the edge of my seat. Uh, so it was, it was nice to celebrate and to send them off. We all stood out in front of central office and waved to the bus. Of course, they had their, the uh, fire and the police and everybody on their way to state and uh, very proud of those girls. Uh, second year in a row and they, they represented Merrill very well as always. I was actually coming uh, into town because I took half a day that day and I was coming into town as they were going by. I saw this convoy of lights and I'm going, what the heck is that? Then I see the bus. So. All the sirens and lights and the ladder truck and yeah. the rescue truck. It, they, it was really Everybody cool. sent them off. So, yeah. and they played well. They won that first set and then lost three close ones. So, I mean, it, yeah. they did a lot better than they did last year. They so. did. They did a wonderful job. Yep, they did a wonderful job. So, um, and speaking of all the state sports, I mean, we got to host uh, regionals and the sectional finals for volleyball and the sectional finals for Division Four football. Yeah. I mean, that's we're we're doing pretty hot in that regard, aren't we? We are, and this is the second time that we've been able to host uh, out on Jay Stadium. And so, uh, uh, St. Croix Central came back in the form of football and beat Freedom. Was it Freedom Irish? Yeah, it was Freedom Irish. Yeah, so it's nice to be able to use our facility, and, and we're, Jay Stadium is making a name for itself throughout the state. And people are thinking, especially this time of the year, what better place to play. There was a little snow on the field. Uh, I think we still need to invest in a, in a brush that can get the snow off and not remove the recycled tires and rubber that's underneath that keep the, the artificial turf actually standing up. But if it had been a, a grass field, the conditions would have been much worse. So I think both teams were very pleasantly surprised at how well the, the field held up. Right, uh, the field held up, I, I got to be at that game. Um, and then we actually had a soccer sectional too that was out oh, there at yeah. the, same, um, the same day as our sectional volleyball game too. Mm. And it was snowing that game and no real complaints I heard except for that the booth was cold. <laughs> yeah, and it was cold. It was, uh, I believe, 22 degrees you were in at kickoff. I wasn't yeah. able to make that game. Yeah, I think it was about 22 degrees at that game. Um, our, John Miller's doing a great job here. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, just the way he's had everything running so smoothly. Um, I mean, just a wonderful guy, too. And for being new this year, it's, it's even hard to tell. Uh, he's not only taken ownership, but he's taken leadership over our facilities and managing them. And, and he's made a wonderful transition from uh, our fall sports into our winter sports. He's doing a great, great job. Right. Um, so go, going out of that, um, going more into next year, actually, really, the referendum survey and stuff. How did that look? 
we uh, were sitting on the edge of our seat for that one. Uh, you know, I'd like to think that I'm in the community quite a bit, and I'd like to think I know how the community feels and how they would react to certain things, but you truly don't know until you survey them. And so when the referendum uh, survey went out, uh, that window was, was open for a little over a month, and with constant reminders, please take the survey. We want to get the feedback from you. And so the window closed, and the results were shared a couple of nights ago at the Long Range Financial Referendum Planning Meeting. We're looking at shortening the name of that committee, by the way, because uh, right now I think we call it the LRFRP Committee. Um, so we'll shorten it to something like the Referendum Committee. But the results were very favorable. In fact, um, with all residents to we have four different levels. Let's look at it this way. We had, no, we, we're not interested in a referendum. Go ahead and make your cuts. Um, or let's just do the 1.8 for the next four years, just enough to stay alive operationally, which would still probably be looking at cuts, get cuts because we're in a declining enrollment district. Uh, it, it, there's no, the forecast doesn't have any relief in the near future, at least, with declining enrollment. Um, then the next step was let's go ahead and, and allow the district to operate uh, for the next four years to the tune of about $1.8 million and let's give them a few extras too because there's also needs that we have. And then the very top one is let's give the district everything that they're asking for. Let's enhance the tech ed program. Let's, let's uh, try to make our salary structure for our staff and our teachers more competitive. Um, let's maintain our buildings. Let's enhance the music program, those types of things. And of all of those, there was only um, approximately 15, 17% that said, no, I wouldn't support any type of referendum. Whereas when you combine the top two between let's give them everything they're asking for or let's give them operational plus a few extras, um, that totaled out to 62% were in favor of that. So those numbers came back very, very strong. I'm very pleased the community does uh, feel that the district does play an important role here and they're willing to support us. And so that's just the referendum survey results. There are still several steps before the board and the board has to decide number one, shall we go to referendum? And number two, if we go to referendum, what will that question be? And so we've got some deadlines coming up by January 20th. We need to actually have our resolution um, approved and so that's where we're at right now. So right now, anytime we talk about a referendum in April, we're talking about a potential referendum in April because the board truly does have the power and the authority to decide, first of all, are we gonna go to referendum? And secondly, what is that referendum question gonna look like? And the voters spoke pretty loud and clear that they would be willing to support uh, not only the 1.8 for operational costs for the next four years, but uh, a few extras too. So it looks like to the tune of about $2.5 million would be very reasonable for our community. Right, and that our community has been so, so good at helping our school district because it's truly their school district and we've stressed that to them. Yes, yes, they really have. Even this past month we had uh, Susan Pillai and Jenny Radke, they represent uh, what they call the well. And what the well their purpose is to, we identify some of our students or our families in need at the elementary buildings. That information is highly confidential, but we know the needs. We have students here for seven and a half, eight, eight nine hours a day. And so we, we know that there's needs out there. And what they did is they went back to their respective uh, congregation and they said, the school district has identified families in need. Let's try to solve this. What, what solution can we come up with? And so they donated a bunch of um, clothing and food items and school supplies and toiletries to help those families. They don't even know which families they helped, but I guarantee you that, that what they did and their contributions went a long ways to really supporting some of our families in need. You know, anytime you get around the holiday season, we have, um, you know, with, with uh, Christmas coming up and Thanksgiving coming up, uh, that means a, a whole different thing to some of our families who are really hurting. And so, the volunteerism in our community is, is extremely special to our district. And every board meeting, we have a list that probably takes up half the page of all the donations, whether it be from Culver's or our various banks or credit unions, or just people saying, hey, 
I don't need these books any longer. I want to donate them to the school building. So without that behind the scenes support, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Right. So um, another behind the scenes, let's take a step into the behind the scenes of the great speaker. Great speakers have ranged from, <clears throat> you know, I, I can't, um, some guys who survived uh, Columbine, so I Susie remember. Susie Faber Hamilton was um, here. Um, I remember one year, Dog the Bounty Hunter was yeah. uh, our great speaker at the middle school. I don't, rem I don't know if he came to the high school, but I remember sure. he was at the middle school. So, yeah. um, I mean, so y you guys have a committee, from my understanding, that helps uh, put, uh, bring a great speaker in. How's that going this year so far? Every year, it's always been a financial struggle, and I'm allowed to, and I say allowed purposely, I'm allowed to sit on that committee, and I get the committee started, but it's a student-led committee. So we've got, we've got sixth, seventh, eighth grade representatives from the middle school, as well as the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior class from the high school. It is truly student-led and student-organized, and they, they call the shots, so it is really their committee. And I was even a little apprehensive to bring forward an idea because it is student-led, and I'm simply somewhat of a spectator, really, on this committee. So what I did was I brought an idea that I had heard of, and uh, that was through Colin Hansen. He's a fifth grade teacher in Edgar, and he's got a program that's called A Walk in Their Shoes. And what he's already done for many years is he's established sponsorships in the central Wisconsin area. And these people, they, the, in, the, the, in the private sector and in the public sector and as individuals, they donate every single year. So he's always sitting on a little bit of a budget. Our struggle has been, okay, here's our speaker, let's bring them in, how much is it gonna cost and how are we gonna get the money? So we're really scrambling for about five months to try to get the money to cover them and sometimes it comes right down to the wire. Well, with, to tap into what Colin Hansen has done, um, he may bring in a speaker and that speaker just, we're not just paying the airfare and for a few nights, but they're gonna be able to make it around to several different districts. And so it's not shouldered by just one district. And all he asks is, give me a list of the people who have supported you in the past, and I'll just ask them if they'd like to give a donation. And it's not mandatory or anything else. He's already sitting on a budget. And so we're very excited that in April, our students said, yes, we want to do this. Um, we don't want to have to scramble for money. Um, in April, we'd like to tap into a walk in their shoes, and we'd like to bring Jackie Robinson's daughter here because that's his next speaker that he has lined up. So it's not just bringing in a celebrity, but obviously she has a message, and that message you know, talks about the racism that existed back there, back then, uh, Jackie Robinson's uh, journey as he became the first African American in the major leagues. And what an experience, She's, she lived it. She is his daughter, and she lived through that entire era. So she has truly a story to tell that's gonna replace anything that we can ever read in the history books or any movie we can ever see. And part of what this includes too, and it's still free of cost to us, um, part of what it includes is the, some of the pre-teaching curriculum that we can do before we get to hear from Jackie Robinson's daughter. Um, so that all students know, this is not just based on the movie, um, this is his story, and then that way they can ask some very intelligent questions of her when, when she comes. So we're very pleased to announce that. We're gonna be having press releases with the exact dates and times um, we're going to invite Tomahawk. They've already accepted. Tomahawk's going to bring their uh, middle school and, senior and, and uh, high school students down, and we're going to have it at the high school auditorium so that we can seat more people. So it's going to be a very special event. Um, these students actually being part of the committee, they get to enjoy having lunch with Mrs. Robinson before, um, before the event, and it's going to be very worthwhile. As always, community members are invited, and it's free of charge. There's no admission. And hopefully Merrill Productions will be able to be there and yep. uh, capture that footage. And I did get you special clearance, so you, right. you will be able to be there, yeah. All right, perfect. Now, here, here's, a, here's a little fact for you. Jackie Robinson is actually one of two people in American sports that has his number retired throughout all of uh, the, their, his entire league. Hmm. Do you know who the second person is? Can you give me the sport? Hockey. No. Wayne, Gr <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, 99, is retired throughout the sport. The great so, one. The great one. 
Yeah, and I'm not much of a hockey fan, but there has just been no other player like Wayne yeah. Gretzky. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no other player in that sport really is that well known. But yeah. it's uh, it's incredible that you know him and Jackie Robinson are the only two. He does live in my hometown, Phoenix, but that's as close as I think I've gotten to hockey. The, uh, the ice has a tendency to melt in Arizona, and so we don't play a lot of and hockey pretty, there. Pretty quickly, huh? Very quickly, oh. yeah. You're just, the, it, it's no fun in skates on a water in the desert. Yeah. Eh, well, grew up with the sport here, so. Yep. So um, what also comes with this weather, though, that, you know, speaking of ice and stuff, what also comes with this weather is hunting. We do have hunting season coming up, and we were just two chatting days. off camera about how <laughs> ill-prepared we are for the start of <laughs> it, hunting season. It came season. up so quickly, I didn't even realize it. No, and I still have everything ready for my archery hunting, um, but uh, rifle hunting is a whole different beast, and now you break out the blaze orange. Um, hopefully, I can put everything together and at least sit uh, for that first weekend, but I think I'm going to be gearing things more towards after Thanksgiving. Are you going to be able to get out on opening day? Um, you know, I used to hunt in the past. Um, however, every time I've gone hunting, my stepdad tends to get the kill before I do. Yeah. Like I have the deer lined up and I hear this and there, down goes my deer and I go, what the heck? And see my stepdad running across the field to get it. So sure. I, I've kind of sat out the last number of years just going, eh, don't need, don't need to worry about it. If I get out on opening day so that I don't break my, my streak, um, I've got some, we only have about six acres, but it overlooks county land. So I've got a tree stand out there. Um, I'm not really in the woods as much as I think. When I look forward, I see nothing but trees for miles and miles and miles. But uh, then when my wife gets in her car and goes to the store, I hear my garage door open about 40 yards behind me. So <laughs> it takes away that whole illusion of I'm out in the middle of the woods. I'm right. only about uh, 40 yards from my front door. But I'll get out there, and then I've got uh, some property, um, a, a gentleman's property that I hunt out towards uh, Athens. And so I'll, I'll make the most of it. And uh, if all else fails, I know where the grocery store is, and yeah. I can always purchase my own protein. My, my family tends to do pretty well on hunting uh, during hunting season, so there, there'll be some venison running around our, sure. our family. Well, and the important thing is that everybody stays safe. So if you are yeah. in a tree, uh, make sure that you're strapped in. That's yeah. extremely important. I always, uh, I make sure that I've got my safety strap. In fact, there's been times when I'm hunting in another property that uh, I'll get all the way to the tree and I'll realize, oh, I didn't bring my straps. And even though the sun may just be getting ready to come up, I make the trek back to my truck and I put my straps on. Um, you just never know what can happen. And, and we don't want to hear of any injuries or um, involving rifles or, or falls or anything this year. It'd be nice to have an injury-free season. Right. We, a lot of my family does, uh, they do drives for the most part. Um, mm. I was never part of the driving stuff because it's like, yeah, I'd rather just sit in my tree stand or sit next to a tree or. Sure. Yeah. You know, the last few years I sat on a round bale just out in the open field and just kind of laid there and waited. <laughs> It but. sounds like your hunting is more like mine. It has to be enjoyable. Yeah. And you need to make sure that you've got hot coffee or, or whatever your, your morning beverage of choice is and just really enjoy just being out in the woods. Yeah. Just, just really enjoy just being out there. Yeah. Which I've managed to do the last number of years, just cleaning the barn for my stepdad as he's getting ready to sure. <laughs> go out there because that's his vacation. I go, have at her. Fantastic. So, um, and with hunting season, uh, that, that lands right smack in the middle of Thanksgiving, too. We have so, a lot to be thankful for, don't we? We have a lot to be thankful for. So I want to ask you first, and then you can ask me if you so choose. What are you most thankful for here in this school district? In the school district, I really am thankful for the partnerships. Like I said, with the volunteerism and the people that step forward, we, we can't survive without uh, the big hearts in the community that we have. So. Uh, I really am thankful for our partnerships and that people have taken a special interest to, to assist our families that are in need, uh, to assist the, uh, the district in general. And with the referendum survey results coming back, I'm extremely thankful for that, that our school plays a key role in this community. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. So that's, 
you know, thankful for the people I work with too. They make my job much easier. Uh, I couldn't work with a better group of people, and that's all. The, that's in every single building district wide. So uh, just thankful for the opportunity I have to work in such a giving community and with such a caring staff. Now, what are you thankful for? I'm actually thankful for all the students. They've made this year so far probably one of the most enjoyable I've had um, yeah. here in the school district. Maybe that's also because you know we've made our staff environment so likable and lovable um, that the students just thrive on that right yeah. now. Yeah. And they've made it enjoyable. I'm thankful for all my coworkers, um, the administration team that's made it so easy to talk to, um, talk to them about anything, any concerns, any problems, um, or just talk in general. It's sure. been, um, it, this has probably been one of the best years working at this school district so far, and I'm hoping I'll have more after this. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, and I appreciate that as well. You know, I, don't, I think it would have been a different conversation a few years ago, but I think district-wide, because of the attitudes and the motivation of our staff and our wonderful students, uh, we've turned a corner. Uh, it wasn't always a free-speaking district uh, in the past, and so uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. I yeah. really am. It's been fun. It's been fun, and hopefully we'll have a lot more years to go. Yeah. So. Um, and so after Thanksgiving, we come back from the break. IT department will love me for this one. We have all the Christmas concerts coming up. Yep. And boy, do we work during those Christmas concerts, don't we? I looked at my calendar because I, I let every building know, please invite me to anything that you have that's going on special-wise programs, activities. You've got your work cut out for you this year. I think it's for three weeks leading up to our winter break. You're going to be a very busy guy. We've got three guys who are, uh, uh, th well, two guys and a gal who are going to be working tirelessly uh, trying to get all these Christmas concerts, the peppermint dance, um, choir concerts, band concerts, yeah. all in the next month, um, moving as fast as they can. And then some of our other uh, events that are coming up too, the pre-K, uh, kids are coming in mm. to the middle school um, doing stuff. The parochial kids are coming in. So, I mean, just a lot of um, our facilities are being used this next month. Let's just say that. Good. And that's a good thing. Our facilities are here to be used. But uh, hopefully you're going to be able to relax then during, uh, during the holiday break. Yeah, well, we got to get to the holiday break first. And <laughs> then we'll... Right. And we got all of our winter sports starting up, which Maryland Productions is proud to announce that we're going to be live streaming every varsity basketball game, boys and girls. Um, talking with the wrestling, uh, with the wrestling guys, they're looking to live stream on our U on their own YouTube page that we're hoping to start up to. Good. Um, and I don't know in the next two, three weeks, you might see all of the sports having their own YouTube page here Wouldn't at the Merrill School nice. District. It's I know we have it, a lot of subscribers. It's become very popular as of late, and uh, I think we could certainly support that. And what better place? If you can't make it to a wrestling match, you can watch it. You can watch it later. So you're not, there's no really no reason to miss anything that you may be interested in. Yeah. Just yeah. a little public announcement. Might not always be the same quality, but... Sure. It, but you'll be able to at least see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. it's and not going to be like being there, yeah. but it's the next best yeah. thing. And maybe here, I mean, I, I hear the wrestling guys might have an announcer, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, at, for all their matches and stuff. So. Well, and if that announcer would like a sidekick for one or two of those uh, matches, you know where to find me. I, I might have to let them know. <laughs> <laughs> might have to let them know that might be the case. So yeah. I think that's it, John. I think we're pretty set off for this edition. I think we are. Well, once again, I'm Nathan Meyer, Dr. John Sample. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time.